Amen. And right after service for our families, young families, we have s'mores and more. So you're invited to come out. We're going to grill hot dogs and uh, eat some s'mores. I think there's going to be a friendly game of football, is what I was told. We'll see. Colossians 1, 3 through 12. In our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, you have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehend the grace of God. This you learn from Ephrasus, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power so that you may have all endurance and patience, joyful, giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God In Christ Jesus for you. Pastor Mata said, let's stand for the gospel reading out of reverence and respect for God. I'm going to be reading from the gospel of St. John chapter 6. I want to start reading verse 10. Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. and When they sat down, there was about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and after he had given thanks, after he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated and also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, now gather up the the fragments that are left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. May God bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. I want to start this morning with a question for you. We, this is a Sunday before Thanksgiving, and so already you're probably thinking about what you're going to have for Thanksgiving dinner. What are you going to eat? What is it, what are the ingredients, maybe, that are important to your Thanksgiving dinner? Well, let's start with the obvious, shall we? Number one is, thank, is, is turkey. That's the obvious. Listen, if you don't eat turkey, if you're eating ham, let me tell you, you're not doing Thanksgiving right, okay? <laughs> we all know that the very first, one of the very first pilgrims, Jebediah Butterworth, Brought the first Thanksgiving. It was a Butterworth Thanksgiving that he brought to dinner. So if you're eating ham, you're not doing right. Uh, Not without a side. (laughs) I know I'm a New Englander. I know what they ate at the first. (laughs) Without a side, let's get a little more controversial. Let's talk about the side dishes. Anybody, what what are some of the side dishes that are required? Mac and cheese. You know you're in the South when you hear mac and cheese. Mashed potatoes. Yes. Green bean casserole. You know, bless my wife's heart. With her uh, condition right now, she's not able to be as involved in the Thanksgiving dinner this year as she has in the past. And so one of the dishes that we're not having this year is green bean casserole. And I'm very disappointed. (laughs) Love me some green beans. (laughs) What other dishes? I heard someone say, sweet potatoes, can't have Thanksgiving, cranberries. Let's not get into the cranberry debate here, gelled or not, let's, yeah. What, 
uh, who, who said that? Let's not jump to that. To every, every service, someone is wanting to get right to dessert before we finish dinner. There's always one of those people in every crowd. We'll come to dessert in a minute, all right? Other side dishes. Rolls. Stuffing. I can't believe stuffing is one of the last ones we've heard. Do you put it in the bird or don't you? No, because it'll make you sick. Gravy. You need gravy on top of everything. All right. All right. Now we'll go to the desserts. Now this is where it gets really controversial. The pie that has the nuts on it that we all love. What is it called? Pecan and pecan. I heard both. Depends on where in the country you're from. Maybe pumpkin pie. I heard cherry pie in one of the earlier services. Apple pie. If you're from Maine, blueberry pie. And these are the things we like. These are the things we look forward to. When it comes to Thanksgiving dinner, we think these are the ingredients that make a Thanksgiving dinner good. But today I want to talk about not the dinner. I want to talk about Thanksgiving What is it that makes Thanksgiving? What are the three key ingredients? And I'm not talking about a one day a year thing because sadly, Thanksgiving has become a one day a year event. We come together, we say thank you, we eat a big meal, we watch football, go hunting, maybe play games with a family, maybe you can see a movie. I don't know what your family tradition is. But what I want to talk about today is not Thanksgiving one day, but a thanks living, where you spend a lifetime of giving thanks to God. And I believe there are three ingredients that are required for that, and Pastor Modisett shared them this morning in his reading. I think the first one that we read in Thessalonians was joy. <laughs> joy in all circumstances. I love joy because joy is different than happiness. Happiness comes from the word happenstance where we get our term circumstance. And so when we think of that, happiness is an emotion that is based on a circumstance. If I wake up tomorrow morning and there's money in my checking account that I think is adequate, my savings account looks good, My investments are doing well. I have a good job that I'm going to go to. My wife and my health is is great. Our children are doing wonderful. They're walking with the Lord. Their health is great. They're successful. I'm living in the house I want to live in. I'm driving the vehicle I want to drive. Well, then I can be happy. But as soon as you take away one of those things, or you change one of those things, or you break one of those things, because my happiness is an emotion based on a circumstance, what happens? (laughs) I lose it. I lose that happiness. You see, joy is different than happiness. Joy is not something that's a circumstance, that's based on a circumstance. Joy is not just an emotion. Joy is something that completely fills us. It's something that that comes upon us when we enter into a relationship with Christ. It is the, the joy that believers have that even in dark times, we can give thanks. Joy is more than an emotion. In fact, the writer of Hebrews, in writing about joy, referenced the prophet in the Old Testament. And this is what he said. He said, be joyful in all things, for he is faithful who has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you, so that you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Friends, joy is something that we can have, not because of the circumstance, not because of what we're going through, but because he will never leave us, he will never forsake us, he walks right there next to us through life, and as the, the, the poem says, he's not walking next to us, he's carrying us during those dark times. He never leaves us, he never forsakes us, so we can boldly say, The Lord is my helper. That's why we can have joy in the midst of trials. That's why we can have joy when things don't necessarily seem to be going our way. That's why someone asked me this week, Pastor, 
with all that's going on with your wife and some of the things that you've gone through and some of the situations you're having to deal with right now, how can you sit at the table and laugh? Well, that's the answer. Because it's not based on the circumstance. It's based on the joy that Jesus gives. Amen. We sing about it when we're children. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We're down in my heart. We're down in my heart. But here's the thing. I think sometimes we sing, I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. We're down in my heart. You better believe it's down your heart. It's so far down your face hasn't seen it yet and registered it. (laughs) Let your face know that you have the joy so it can show that you have that joy. No, I'm not trying to take anything away from our situations, but joy is not circumstance-based. And if you want to have a thanks-living life, embrace that joy that's found in Jesus. And listen, friends, if you've not experienced that joy, don't leave today. Come talk to one of the clergy, one of the pastors, ministers, one of our chaplains. We'd love to share with you how you can experience that joy. So that's the first ingredient. Let's look at the second ingredient, okay? According to what Pastor Monaset read, the second one is to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. This isn't an excuse to go home now and call your boss tomorrow and say, hey, I can't come into work because my pastor said I'm supposed to pray all day long. That's that's not an excuse. What I'm talking about is this attitude of prayer where all throughout the day, no matter what you're going through, good or bad, joy or sorrow, no matter what you're experiencing, you are in an attitude of prayer. I've started something new in my life. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do before I look at Twitter or Facebook or my twit face or any of those things, the first thing I do before I put my feet on the ground I go before the Lord in prayer and I say, Dear Lord, thank you for a good night's sleep. Thank you for the light of another day, giving me another chance to live. And then I get up and start my morning routine. I have my devotions. I go throughout my day. And as a a problem comes up during the day, I say, Lord, please help me. Give me guidance. Give me wisdom in handling this situation. I've got a meeting with your associate pastor, Pastor Mata, said, give me patience. <laughs> I'm dealing with whatever he's messed up now, Lord, please. I make it an, all throughout the day when something good happens. Lord, I thank you so much. Ah, oh, thank you for helping me to find this paper that I had misplaced. All day long, I'm in the attitude of prayer. And the last thing I do before I close my eyes at night and go to sleep is I say, And now, Lord, I thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I start with, I open in the morning and close it at night and all day long is a continual prayer. And here's the cool thing about that. The Bible says God neither slumbers nor does he sleep. It says that Jesus is intercessing on our behalf. Jesus is praying. When we're asleep, he's praying on our behalf. The Holy Spirit is, it says the Holy Spirit is, is offering up prayers that we can't even understand. Our minds can't comprehend the utterances of the Holy Spirit. While we're praying throughout the day, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are joining us. And when we're asleep at night, they've taken over and they're continuing to pray for us. Isn't that wonderful? Ingredient number one is joy. Ingredient number two is pray without ceasing. Ingredient number three, and in everything, give thanks. Boy, that's not easy, is it? In everything, give thanks. How do we give thanks in everything? What about the problems that come along? What about the struggles? What about the hardships we have? What about the painful experiences? I'm going to confess something to you this morning. I'm going to confess that when my children were young, I inflicted great pain upon them. Not only did I inflict great pain upon them, but I didn't do it myself. I paid someone else to do it. To inflict great pain. And Ariana just got her pictures for her track season and she texted me thanking me for it. She said, hey dad, thanks for the Invisalign. Thanks for bringing me to the dentist. (laughs) So my teeth were white and lined up straight. Here's the deal. 
When my kids were little, they didn't understand when I took them to the dentist and paid someone to inflict pain upon them. In fact, I didn't necessarily need them to understand it. I tried to explain it to them, but during the time it was, Dad, no, no, we don't want to do this. Dad, it hurts. Do we have to go? You don't go. No, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and while I was there, do you think I enjoyed them inflicting pain on my kids? Absolutely not. But I knew that it was for their good. I knew in the long run, it would be for their best. And here's the thing. If I, as an earthly, sinful father, (laughs) can understand that concept, how much more our heavenly father allows us to go through these painful experiences. Why? Because he knows, he can see the end game, and he knows that it is for our good. For he has said that he works all things together for our good. To those who love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things. That's why we can give thanks in all things. We may not understand it. And just as it was painful for me to watch my kids go through those painful experiences in the dentist chair or in the doctor's office or getting a shot, you know what? I knew it was for their good. It's painful for our Heavenly Father to watch us have to go through it. But he knows in the long run it's for their good. At the moment, we may not be saying thanks, but boy, what if we did? (laughs) Lord, I don't understand this, but I know it's for my good. Thank you. Because I believe in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus, concerning us. So here we come. Thanksgiving is Thursday. We'll enjoy some good food. We know the important ingredients that we need to make our Thanksgiving dinner our Thanksgiving tradition, important to us. But let's review the ingredients that are needed to make for a life of thanks living. Number one, give, have joy in all situations. Number two, pray without ceasing. Number three, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God. Happy thanks living. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you are in control of all things. We can give thanks because our thanks is not, our joy, our thanksgiving is not based on what we know. I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. It's not based on our bank account. It's not based on our health. It's not based on our situation. Our joy is based on Jesus. For you have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. There is nothing we could want more than that. We can... As a chorus, we learned when we were little, we can whisper a prayer in the morning, whisper a prayer at noon, whisper a prayer in the evening to keep our heart in tune. We can constantly throughout the day be in an attitude of prayer so that we are truly praying without ceasing. And Lord, in every situation, in everything, we can give thanks, even though we don't understand because we know you are working it together for our good. Lord, help us today to truly believe it and not just believe it, but to act like we believe it, to receive it and to live it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.